Did you know that when the lava comes out very thickly from a volcano, there is a higher chance that it will erupt violently? Welcome to the Reometer Lab. So what is a fluid? According to the physics definition, a fluid is defined as a substance that deforms continuously under action of a shear stress, no matter how small the shear stress may be. Without the shear stress, there will be no deformation. Fluids take up the space or the shape of the container they're in. By this definition, both gases and liquids are considered fluids. So fluids are generally, generally classified by the relation between the applied shear stress and the rate of deformation. The more shear stress you add, the more deformation you get. Based on this, fluids can be classified in two main sections. You have those in which the shear stress is directly proportional to the rate of deformation. These fluids are called Newtonian fluids, after Isaac Newton. On the other hand, those fluids whose shear stress is not proportionally related or directly related to the shear rate, those are called non newtonian fluids. So this relationship between shear stress and deformation is what we call viscosity. Viscosity can also be thought of as the internal friction of the fluids. So the higher the viscosity, the more friction a fluid faces, the harder it is for the fluid to move. The lower the viscosity, the easier it is for the fluid to move. As such, we have water, which has low viscosity, and if you pour it down, you can see you, it will just flow smoothly. There's no much uh, viscosity. On the other hand, if you pour honey, you can see it will take longer for it to pour down or for it to move. It has a higher viscosity. So how do, how do we measure viscosity? Viscosity can be measured in different units, but the main one that we measure viscosity is called the poise. And it represents one dyne second per square centimeter. Other units are the centipoise, which is one of the most common, which is a poise divided by 100, the pascal second, which equals 10 poise, and the millipascal second, which equals one centipoise. According to Newton, he thought that viscosity, when viscosity was constant, meaning independent of the shear rate, fluids that exhibit this property are classified as Newtonian. Typical examples of Newtonian fluids are, include water, motor oil, gasoline, and air, meaning that these fluids will have the same constant viscosity no matter how fast, how much you increase the shear rate. On the other hand, non-Newtonian fluids are broadly defined and classified as those fluids in which their shear stress is not directly proportional to the deformation or the shear rate. The most common type of non-Newtonian fluids include pseudoplastics, which have a decreasing viscosity as the shear rate increases, dilatant fluids, which have an increasing viscosity as the shear rate increases, and plastic, which require a certain amount of force to be applied before you induce an emulsion. Some examples of a pseudoplastic uh, fluid can be um, quicksand. If you start at a low velocity, low shear rate, low deformation, quicksand will be hard. But the more you start moving, as you see in movies, the more the, the quicksand will start flowing, flowing, and flowing until you start sinking even faster. Because the viscosity is decreasing, it's behaving more like a fluid, more like a liquid, and therefore you're sinking faster. On the other hand, a dilatant is those fluids in which the faster you move, the more stress you apply, the harder or the more viscous it becomes. One example of this is when you have played before with cornstarch and water. If you make cornstarch and water, you make that little gel or mixture. If you heat it really hard, it will, it will, your hands will bounce back because it's acting more like a solid. It has high viscosity. But when you just put it in your hand and you let it flow, it will just start flowing down your fingers as if it was a liquid. So this is just certain, these are just some two examples of the fluids that we have here. Another example can be ketchup, which sometimes requires some initial force before it actually starts flowing like it should be. Another example of non-Newtonian fluids are those that are time-related or time-dependent. 
Fluids in which the viscosity decreases with time are known as thixotropic. The other fluids in which the viscosity increases with time are known as rheopectic. Both thixotropy and rheopexy may occur with any of the previously discussed flow behaviors. So you may have a celloplastic thixotropic or a dilat dilatant thixotropic or rheopectic, etc. But this is just something for you guys to know that even though one is pseudoplastic, does it mean it cannot be also thixotropic or rheopectic? So now let's cover what rheology is. So rheology is a study of change in form and the flow of matter embracing elasticity, viscosity, and plasticity. In simpler words, rheology is simply the study of motion, the study of flow, the study of liquids that are moving. In this lab, we're going to be using what we call a rheometer. What this rheometer does is that it measures the viscosity of a certain fluid under different conditions. If we have a fluid that we don't know its, its viscosity, and we test it on the rheometer, what we do is, once we put the, the liquid that we're testing, we put one of the spindles to test it that will start moving around the liquid. There's a calibrated spring inside the rheometer that will be measuring how much force is applied, how much force it's receiving, is resisting, from the fluid to flow, from the fluid to move. So this lab is divided in four different experiments. The first experiment you will be testing and looking at the effects that of time and viscosity. You will have a liquid and you will see whether the viscosity increases with time or decreases or remains constant. On the second part of the, ex of the experiment, you will be looking at how does the shear rate or the speed, the RPM, affect the viscosity. Does increasing the RPM increases the viscosity or decreases it? On the third part of the lab, you will be testing how does the surface area of a spindle, of the area that you're moving the liquid, how does it affect the viscosity? Does the surface area increase, uh, produces a higher viscosity, a smaller viscosity? And on the last part of the experiment, you're looking at how does the temperature affect viscosity? Does increasing the temperature of the liquid affects its viscosity, will it increase, will it decrease? All of these things will be covered in the procedure and the analysis part of the lab. So once you see those videos, you get all the data, make sure to write down your analysis of what you're seeing. Let's go into the main part of the lab. Thank you.